Okay. Um, just a quick couple. Um, can you tell us why you're here today? I was invited, <laughs> and 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 we, you know, there's there, there's a lot of of uh, uncertainty uh, and a, and a lot of challenges, as there always is in education, but this year even more. So we're. I was in Lewiston last week. Uh, I'm headed up to Sugar Salem, and I'm going to go to Bonneville later today. But it's important for me. I just got through talk, and I didn't do much listening. But we, I intend to do a lot more listening when I'm over here to to hear from frontline educators and administrators about what the challenges are at this point in time. Okay, so uh, if you could tell the students one thing on the first day of school, what would it be? Well, it's always, uh, you know, work hard. Uh, you know, make good choices. Uh, you know, the first choice you make on the first day of school is get out of bed and, and get to school on time. But I, I, I say this early and I say it at commencements that life's all about making choices. And every time you make a good choice, it gets easier to make a better choice. So, uh, you know, being prepared, doing the right thing. Now, uh, all these things to, to keep you safe are choices that we didn't worry about much before, but we have to worry about now. But making good choices uh, to every day be as prepared as you possibly can to be in class so that you maximize uh, that investment that your parents, your community, your educators have made in you, uh, that's the right thing to do. Sweet. Um how many other schools are opening up without restrictions? Uh, we have a, I've got a spreadsheet that told, tells that, but it's, it literally changes every day. Uh, uh, this health district here, we're in the Eastern Idaho Health District, uh, they were, they, I thought they did a really good job. They said, if this happens, if X happens, we're going to do Y. So if, if community spread increases, uh, you know, the amount of social distancing, physical distancing uh, will have to go up. Uh, if everybody does the right thing, it'll go down. Uh, every day we learn more about how to treat the COVID virus. Every day we get closer to when we'll have a vaccine uh, that'll be widely acceptable and we'll, we'll go back to herd immunity and, and a regular life. Uh, but things change. This is, this is science and science evolves. There's a reason this is called the novel coronavirus because there's a lot we didn't know about it early that we know now. What was the hardest thing about shutting down Idaho? Oh, just just shutting down Idaho, but it was uh, the no action alternative was nobody took the no action alternative. The issue is how aggressive are you and and you do what you do in life. You go find uh, the best possible advice out there and you listen to it, you digest it, you get feedback, uh, you listen to your trusted advisors, but then you listen to everybody and do the right thing. But we, we believe we were we were a little fortunate that we weren't like the first state like Washington and California and, and Massachusetts were. So we got to learn from what those other states did. Uh, I would do a few things a little different if I had to do it again. I hope I don't. Uh, but overall, we think we've done uh, quite well, given what a tough challenge this is. Yeah. So let's say Idaho had the first cases in all the US. Do you think New York would have shut down? Uh, like we well, if we didn't shut down in Idaho until, matter of fact, I remember where I was. Uh, it, it started, our first cases in Idaho started Blaine County in the Sun Valley Ketchum area. And, and we had already set up priorities and the, and the priorities were when we have community spread, we don't know where it's coming from, then we've got a, that was the first school districts that closed, that was the first community that closed down. I would, I think every state followed that that we didn't, we didn't shut down until we knew there was a risk that we couldn't contain the disease. And I, if we would have been the state, I would assume New York would have learned from us and they would have shut down at some point in time, but there's no use shutting down if you don't have a risk. So I own a little business. I throw parties for high school kids and for like just dances and stuff. When do you think that's going to be safe to that, start doing the, again? The, the one thing about the COVID virus is it's not fair. There's some there's some industries that are profiting off of the COVID virus. You know, some some food commodities are in bigger demand than they were before. But the hospitality industry and the party industry is probably one of the most uh, most negatively impacted 
uh, industries there is. Uh, what, airlines, uh, big, big events, and it's all about measuring transmissible moments. If you've got spread and you've got an event where there's going to be more transmission, and we're learning more about that, uh, a you and I passing, even like right here, uh, uh, if, if I happen to be asymptomatic and I'm spreading the virus, um, it, it, generally the time frame is 15 minutes. Somebody spreading the virus for over 15 minutes, then you have a real threat of a, of a spread. And, and so that's why you see some events where there's big events and everybody's there and nothing happens, but it's, peop it's where people are inside, where there's poor circulation, where you've got somebody that's asymptomatic, then you really have a risk of, of having the spread. So I would say my long answer to your short question is we're going to have to have lower numbers and, and uh, higher immunity, which is either a vaccine or, or uh, yeah. herd immunity. So is it safer to be outside? So like Abs our, oh, way more. So like our first football game when we pack this, this stand because we're good. Are we, uh, is that going to be safe? Uh, outside like, is always better. Outside, better circulation. Those are all things. And, and frankly, outside in the sunlight is even better because uh, the COVID virus doesn't like UV light. Uh, outside at night. But if you're outside where you've got good airflow, uh, it, it, I've seen scientific studies uh, that, you know, they talk about six feet and eight feet. And, uh, but, but if you're outside, uh, the sun's shining, there's good air circulation, there's a lot lower risk. But if you, if, if it's at night and the air's still and not going anywhere like it is right outside right now with the smoke, uh, your risk goes up. But it's, but we, we learn more about it every day. Gotcha. So what do you think the biggest challenges students are going to face this year will be? Well, if they can be back in class, <laughs> if they can be uh, back in class and be face to face with their professional educator, that's going to be... Uh, you know, the longer we go, uh, the system, technology, internet uh, access, is getting better, but it's not getting better fast enough. We're gonna, what I worry about is the gap. I worry about the kids that start off behind, that need a professional educator to get them caught up. I worry about those kids and that they, they we always struggle with that gap. The, the ability for your class to move at a certain rate is dependent upon many times the kid that's struggling the most. And the longer we go without having a face-to-face, -face, uh, you know, and that real personal touch from a professional ed educator, that means that even when we go back to normal, the, the spread in a classroom is gonna be bigger. That's what I really worry about is that, that delta, that the, the, the children that have a great parents, maybe parents or educators, uh, that have those kind of advantages, they're going to be at one level. But the parents that, for a variety of reasons, have bigger challenges, don't know how to handle a first grader versus a third grader versus a sixth grader, uh, that's a whole different challenge. And, and that spread between those kids that have really life went on as normal because they had a parent that was a teacher or they're blessed that their grandparent is retired in his home. Uh, I just worry about that delta. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Thank you.